Okay, you tens, as promised, we're going to dial up the challenge now. And, and actually, um, this type of question that we're going, this type of example that we're going to write down in our books now, so that it acts as a study guide example, um, is probably a question that you won't find in a foundation tier paper. Having said that, I actually think that if you keep your wits about you, this is actually not as difficult as it may seem. So if you are doing foundation tier, listen, but don't worry about writing down the example at the end. As I said, I'm pretty sure you can do it. It's all about keeping your wits about you. So let's get going. So in this example, this is example two that we are writing down in our books and I'll give you time to stop and copy it. The question is calculate the overall energy change for this reaction. Now this is the reaction between C3H8 which is known as propane. Now propane um, we often find when we are, um, we find it in gas cylinders. Okay, you might have heard about propane gas. Now, the reason why it's called prop, propane, is because it has three carbon atoms. And I always remember it nice and easily because, as you know by now, I'm a big rugby fan. And the number three position is the prop. So if the hydrocarbon, the molecule containing hydrogen and carbon, has three carbon atoms, it's going to be called propane. Right, so in this reaction, propane, which is just a fuel, reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. Now, this is a typical combustion or burning reaction. How do I know? Because I've got a fuel, I've got oxygen, and it always produces carbon dioxide and water. So maybe in your gas cylinders for your barbecue, when you go out camping, maybe rather than propane, you've got butane. So if it was butane, it would react with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. If it was wood I was burning, it would be wood plus oxygen produces, yes, you're getting it, carbon dioxide and water. If I was burning paper, it would be paper plus oxygen produces carbon dioxide and water. This is one of the easiest chemical reactions to learn, a combustion reaction. And in fact, in respiration, it would be glucose plus oxygen produces carbon dioxide and water. And yes, all these reactions are obviously overall described as exothermic reaction because it gives out heat and the reading on the thermometer will obviously go up. So let's have a look at this example and break it down. If I had to draw these molecules and use what we call structural diagrams for these molecules, or if you want to, if you've got some sweets at home, some jelly tots or um, anything that you can squeeze a toothpick into, give it a go. So in propane, I've got the three carbon atoms and each carbon atom um, has some hydrogen bonds joined to it. And we'll talk a bit in a later section of how you work out how to draw this. But for now, um, just trust me on this one. I've got my five oxygen molecules, my three carbon dioxide molecules and my four water molecules. And I've also got this table that tells me the bond energies between all these different types of bonds that I have in this question. You'll be given that. You don't need to learn it off by heart and look very carefully as well. It tells you that the unit is kilojoules per mole. So let's go and break this down a little bit more. So the first thing I've got to do is I've got to count how many of these bonds do I have. If we start off with the carbon hydrogen bonds, count with me, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I'd literally just write down those numbers very carefully on the diagram so that I don't get confused. And then how many carbon carbon um, bonds do we have? We've got two. And I've done it in a different color, so I don't get confuzzled along the way. And then our other reactant is oxygen. And we've got five of those oxygen atoms. So it's going to have to be five times 498. And then if we go over to our products. We've got three 
carbon dioxide molecules and in each carbon dioxide molecule we got that C double bond O. So I've got two of those C double bond O's and I've got three all together. So three times two gives me six. And really that's the part that catches most people, that trips them up. It's not difficult, is it? And then finally I've got four water molecules and in each water molecule I've got two OH bonds. So I've got to go four times two to give me eight of these OH bonds in total. See, I told you this is not too difficult. You just got to count. So how are we going to set this up? So I'm going to write down a subheading to break bonds and this is where I go back to the very first thing that we learned to break bonds. I've got to put in energy. I've got to add energy. So it's a positive number. So I've got eight carbon hydrogen bonds. I've got two carbon carbon bonds and I have five OO bonds. I write that down. Don't fall into a bad habit of leaving steps out. That's where you make it difficult for yourself. I now go and use that table to substitute carefully the values for those bond energies. So I've got 8 times 435 plus 2 times 347. And I've used my brackets to make the calculation clearer for me. And finally, 5 times 468. And I plug this in my calculator, and this is the bit that's always worth checking in your exam. Have I done a Wally mistake and put in a wrong number? Double check by doing the um, calculation again, or certainly at the end, go through it. So I get those values giving me a total of 6,664. And to show the examiner that I know it's a positive value, I'm going to put in that plus sign because I'm adding energy to break those bonds. Okay, now our new subheading to make the bonds to form the products of carbon dioxide and water. What have I got? Oh, of course, I need to remember that when I make bonds, it's a negative value because energy is being released. Remember that word released, not produced, because that energy is always there. It's just being released. Okay, so this time, remember because of the balanced equation, I've got two carbon oxygen bonds, but I've got three carbon dioxide molecules. So it's three times two, which gives me three times two COs, plus four times two oxygen hydrogen bonds. I then use my table to carefully substitute in the values. So it's six times 805 plus eight times 464 for the oxygen hydrogen bonds. And that gives me a total of minus 8,542. Now, notice I put in kilojoules per mole because if you put down 8542 I don't know if that's the number of M&Ms you mean the number of bananas the number of monkeys or the number of kilojoules per mole so don't forget the units and now put in that negative number to show the examiner that I know that as bonds are being made energy is being released okay now finally my overall energy change I use this calculation, this formula, and again, don't be lazy, write it in. Delta H, or the overall change in energy, equals the energy to break bonds plus the energy to make bonds. And I use the brackets so that I don't get mixed up with my positive or negative number. So I now substitute those in, and I get an answer of minus 1,878. The the energy to make bonds was bigger than the energy to break bonds, so I'm expecting it to be a negative number. And what does a negative number mean? Negative number is the X, and an X tells me it's the exothermic reaction. Pause the video. You've done incredibly well. It doesn't get more difficult than this. Copy this down step by step in your notes before we resume. You are doing amazingly well. Now, whether you are doing higher tier or foundation tier, I want you all to now 
practice on your own. I've shown you how I've done it. It's now your turn. So in our example, which I am going to get up on the screen now, this is what we are given. So calculate the overall energy change of the forward reaction in the Haber process. So a bit of revision there, Haber process, nitrogen plus hydrogen reacts to form ammonia. And of course, you need to make sure it's balanced if they are not kind enough to balance it for you. Okay, so pause the video, give it a go. If you get stuck, I've got some clues, but try, see if you can do it without the clues. Okay, so you need a clue. So the first thing I would do is I would draw a structural diagram of the chemicals. And if you need a bit of help, look at the bond energy table to help you. Also, don't forget to balance because that's so important so that we make sure we calculate the overall number of bonds. If you need a bit more help, go to the next slide. Otherwise, pause and give it a bash. If you get it wrong, that's fine. That's how we learn. Good luck. Okay, so this is what the structural diagram would look like. We've got one nitrogen molecule, three hydrogen molecules, and two ammonia molecules, each with an NH, three NH um, bonds in them. Right, perhaps that clue has helped you count the number of bonds and then start your calculations. Okay, hopefully you've given a really good go now. What I would like you to do is take out your purple pen and purple pen your work because we learn from our mistakes or perhaps you've just done this absolutely brilliantly. You've absolutely got this. Well done, you. Okay, so looking at this example, we would start off with energy to break bonds, which we know is a positive number. We've got one nitrogen, a nitrogen atom. We've got three hydrogen hydrogens. So we substitute the numbers in and we get an answer of 2,249. Have you remembered that it's kilojoules per mole? Have you remembered to put in the positive sign? And then to break the bonds, I've got, it's, of course it's going to be a negative number, always helpful to put it there as a bit of a crook note for yourself. I had three times two nitrogen hydrogen bonds. So that's six times and using the value 391 gives me an answer of 2,346. It's got to be a negative number. Have you got that there? Have you put the units? Well done. Now we want to calculate the overall energy change. So we use this, calcul this um, formula. Have you written it in? And now we substitute in the numbers, remembering the signs, the positive and the negative. And the overall energy change is minus 97 kilojoules per mole. Have you put in the negative? Have you put the kilojoules per mole? And therefore, what's your conclusion? Because it's negative, the overall energy change is, of course, exothermic. Well done. You have done so incredibly well. So next, you're going to do a quiz. It's just a short quiz because you've been working incredibly hard. Make sure you purple pen your work and give yourself a pat on the back. And if you've uh, made any of these, um, that's a good time to, to have a nibble or my kids are gonna love them. Take care.